Hello, everybody, and welcome to Kairos Has Friends, the show where I sit down with the people that matter to me the most, and those people are my friends. Before we get to our special guest today, if you are interested in seeing more of The Vibe with Kai, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and on, and on Twitter, at The Vibe with Kai. You can also follow me on, uh, let's see, uh, Snapchat and on TikTok before it gets banned. You can follow me there, at Kairos Keenan. And then last but not least, if you want some daily motivational stuff, if you want, you can visit my website at thevibewithkai.com where I'm always posting blogs and videos and things that I help you do good, feel good, be good, and live a good life full of good vibes. But enough about me. Enough about me and my, my good vibes and my positive energy and all that stuff that I, that I live through every day. Uh, I'm sitting here with a very special guest today. Uh, and, and you're going to have to forgive me if I say your last name wrong, but I'm going to take a shot here and okay. say it right. I purposefully did not ask you this during the pre-interview because I want people to see how bad I am at this, okay? Are right, you ready? Yes. All right. I'm sitting here with uh, the founder of Coaching with Jess and the author of the book, I Don't Hate My Ex-Husband, which is a brilliant title. I Don't Hate My Ex-Husband, which is available on Amazon and other major retailers as well. I'm sitting here with Jess DeBose. Amazing. DeBose right? is accurate. Yes. Yes. I, <laughs> but let me tell you, I'm so proud of myself. You should I'm, be. I am incredibly proud of myself. Uh, yeah, so I'm sitting here with uh, with Jess DeBose, coaching with Jess. I don't hate my ex-husband. Uh, two topics that I want to I want to get into today. But before we get into that, I just want to check up on you, just as a human being. How are you holding up in quarantine and, and on the pandemic world? How are How are you holding up? I'm great. Honestly, yeah. this has been probably the best year of my life, despite yeah. the fact that there's a bunch of crazy things happening. That's great because that's something that I, I, I tell to people all the time. I'm like, there's a lot of things that are out of our control right now, right? In 2020, there's so many things that like we like that our, our, our normal lives are just not normal anymore. So we have a choice. We can either uh, accept that and, and you know, uh, revitalize or rejig our life, or we can just be like, nah, this stinks, <laughs> right? Well, and the reality is, like, certainty is an illusion anyways. Mm. So even when we thought we had everything put together, like, that's not actually true. You have no idea what's going to happen. That is a great way of putting it. Certainty is is an illusion. Is that now, is that, 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 that mindset? That, is that something that you've learned over time? Is it something that you've, that, that, that you've come to realize just over the past couple of years or just this year? Where, Where did you get that from? Uh, I've learned it over time. Uh, I will say part of that is getting a divorce. Sure. Um, teaches me. I actually have a tattoo on my shoulder that says, um, "Nothing is permanent. Everything mm. will be." Um, so, except I, for tattoos. Tattoos are pretty permanent, though. That's, that's why it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're like Kyrus. That's the joke. That's the joke, guy. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. That's okay. But yeah, certainty being an illusion is definitely a mindset that I've gained um, over the last few years. But this Mm -hmm. year, particularly, I have a new set of beautiful, wonderful family people who have a similar mindset to me and we're just growing together. And that is just being instilled in me all the time. It's like certainty is an illusion. Mm -hmm. COVID is an excuse. Like, Mm -hmm. Yes, COVID is real. Yes, there are people who are being affected by it. But what is the next excuse going to be? As my, as a coach, that's part of my job is to help people cut through their excuses because that's what it is. So Absolutely. in writing a book, which I published this year, I had a bunch of excuses about why it wasn't done until somebody yeah. was like, well, when do you want to have it done by? Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit, that means I need to write it now. <laughs> <laughs> There's no excuse. There's nothing stopping me from doing this. I just need to do it. I, I do want to. I, so you, you alluded to this just now. You are you are a coach. You, you, you are the founder and the owner of of coaching with Jess. Um, what made you decide that you want to pursue this this kind of thing? Because that it's 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 hard. It's 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 a it's a big responsibility to say to other people, I want to listen to you and I want to hear you and I want to help guide you and help you navigate some of the waters that you may be you know traveling through right now. What made you decide that this was the route that you wanted to go? Honestly, I've been doing it my whole life and just didn't get paid for it. Uh, mm-hmm. When I was in like middle school and high school, I had friends who'd be like, are you going to school for counseling? And I'd be like, nah, I don't want to get paid for that. <laughs> like, oh, 
<laughs> right. So uh, a few years ago, I was actually looking to get my master's in counseling because that I didn't know coaching was even a thing. Sure. Um, and then my best friend was going through some curriculum by um, the Hendricks Institute. It's actually where I got my coaching certification. Um, but she was telling me about this curriculum and I, sh I would say things to her and then she would read it in the curriculum. And I was like, who are these people? And why ah, are we saying the same things? Right. She's like, um, Jess, I think they have a coaching program. I was like, okay. So I looked into it and like their next seminar was like three weeks away. And I was in Ohio at the time and they were in yeah. California, but I was like, I have to go. And I've made a way out of no way and made myself get there. And it that's my fascinating. Life I love that. Have you, so like one of the things that you, that you, that you wrote, and I, I want to make sure I, I say this right, because I, I love this. You say that you're helping people find the best versions of themselves, right? I love that. I love that ideology. Um, is that something that you personally like had, I guess, a struggle with in your life, like growing up, like finding a way to make the best of yourself, you know, that self-love, you know, mindset, is that something that you personally <sighs> had to struggle with? <sighs> yeah, yeah. I think I have had people in my life who wanted to see me win, mm. but when you don't love yourself, that can only take you so far. Right. And again, when I was married, I didn't love myself and how hard it is to love somebody who doesn't even love themselves. And right. that was part of the difficulty in our marriage, to be honest. And so my book is like, my journey through grief and ultimately my path to self-love. And so if I can help other people shortcut through so they don't have to do the same things I did and take longer, help people learn how to have better self-talk so that they can change their mindset and grow. Um, it's, it's, I'm, a, I'm really good at it. I'm a, yeah. My superpower is holding space and really cutting through the bullshit. And uh -huh. so if I can help people do that, like uh, it, it's so transformative. Sure. It's, transformative and it will change your life forever nice that's a, that's 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 great I, I, now i'm curious because you've you've taught you you every day you get to talk with people and you get to to help them and 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 obviously you you have your own experiences that you've gone through as well is there a common i guess piece of advice that you would tell people in regards to self-love specifically mm -hmm. you know is there something that you want to always remind people of the number one question I ask my clients is, how are you taking loving care of yourself mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. this week? How are you taking loving care of yourself? And really, um, we are not taught how to take care of ourselves. We are taught how to survive. Wow. We are not taught how to lovingly take care of ourselves. And so most people don't even have an answer to that question when I first ask it. Interesting. Is that is that a... Is that a, a, a a common struggle that you find people have and how can people, you know, rectify that? Yeah. So you have to really start to get to know yourself because yeah. everyone's different. You know, taking loving care of yourself is going to be different from how I do it because you're a different human than I am. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't like running. I hate running. I would never go running for fun. You could not pay me to run. <laughs> Um, but there are lots of people who pay to be in marathons. Yes. I don't understand that. But that is how they take loving care of themselves because right. they love to run. That is not my jam. Um, but I have learned the things that um, connect me to myself or connect me to spirit, universe, God, whoever it is that you think of as a higher power um, or just yourself. Whatever directly connects you to that quickly is what, those are the things that you do to take loving care of yourself. And it's right. not until we spiral and have like a meltdown do people like remember, oh, okay, what is the thing that I have stopped doing? Oh, I haven't really eaten anything today. I haven't drank any water. I haven't been sleeping. These are basic survival things, first of all. But then the other things, like I love writing. I'm really good at it. That's connects me to my soul. Yeah. Um, playing music really connects me to my soul. So those different types of things are the things that you get to learn about yourself to take loving care of yourself. Now, when, when it comes to music, do, do, you, do you play any specific instruments? Do you like to sing? <laughs> like, yes, my degree is in music education. No um, way. <laughs> yeah, so I've been playing flute for 22 years. Wow. I guitar i can play lots of other instruments but mostly i play flute and guitar and so so that's those those two are your, are your favorites 
Yes and no. I don't <laughs> own the other ones yet. I'm oh, going to own other instruments. At right, some point. right. <laughs> Maybe we can get people listen, friends. If you're listening right now, we're going to we're going to get just her instruments. We want to make sure she gets them. So if you have any any, give me an example of one. Give me that uh, that you don't net. have. All right, friends, you're listening right now. Jess needs a clarinet. If you want to send her a clarinet. And a piano. And a piano. <laughs> uh, like, you want, like, a baby grand? We'll get you a baby grand. So friends, Ooh. let's get her a baby grand piano, please. See, I'm just going to use the pool, the little pool that I have in the world. I'm going to see. <laughs> that would be a, a baby grand Oh, my piano. gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> let's, let's get this girl a Steinway, please. Can we just make this happen? Get her a Steinway. Put you know spots. you know something about music. I hear you over there. I, the okay, so okay, so funny story. So my uh, I went to uh, Westminster School of the Performing Arts. Of course you did. Of course I did. Because why not? Because <laughs> like, <laughs> but you I have so this yeah. Going I on. I went to I went to well technically I went to Ryder University right. That's that's my college. But then uh, I I was uh, a minor in in marketing or I'm sorry a minor in in. Um, uh, theater and, and acting and, and all of that so but my main bread and butter was marketing communications which is what I do now when I'm not doing podcasts <laughs> so yeah I, I might know a little something something about <laughs> pianos and flutes and guitars I might be able to bust something out every now and then <laughs> so I so I I want to I one of the things that you you keep that you obviously keep referring back to is, and this is you know the, the crux of, of the conversation is in regards to your divorce right and and your marriage and and how that kind of shaped you into who you are today so much so that you wrote a book about it because you wanted yes. to share this you want to share this experience so just as, as a reminder friends uh, her book is called I don't hate my ex-husband which is yes. a fantastic title so if you don't mind this like tell us why that title how you got to this point that you wanted to write a book about about this topic yeah so um I was with my ex-husband for, we were married for three and a half years and together for five. Mm -hmm. um, and we got divorced, what year was that? 2017? Okay. So three years ago, three and a half years ago. And um, probably a year and a half to two years later, I had this idea in my head and I wrote the introduction to my book. And I, I had the title already. It's like, I don't hate my ex-husband because that's, it's true. We're right. friends. We right. talk regularly. And so I sent him the introduction to my book and I said, I really want to write this. What do you think? Because I also recognize that this is not just my story. It's yeah. his too. And though I wasn't looking for permission, I was looking for, I wanted to honor him throughout the entire process because there's no one that gets to talk poorly about him because he's an amazing human. And we have this concept in uh, relationships when they're ending, like when you're talking to me, that person's the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. He's right. an amazing human. And our story is still an epic love story. Right. And it has all these twists and turns and it's beautiful. So um, yeah, I wrote the introduction like seamlessly. I don't even think I edited it and I just sent it him and he was like, yeah, write it. I want to read it before you publish it, but write it. And I was like, okay, so I did. That's amazing. So like, what I, I know that there's one of the things that that people have trouble doing is exactly what you're talking about right now in regards to, you know, going through a divorce and still finding ways to be cordial with your ex, especially when you have children together, right? Because it's even even more so it's like it's it's necessary, but it's hard, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you find that it's easy to be a friend of your ex-husband and if so what would you say to people that may be going through something similarly with an ex-husband where it's like they want to be friends but like it just seems hard or impossible at times because the, the reason I ask is because there, there have been a number of times when uh, I've heard stories about people that you know they have to, I guess, draw a line somewhere, right? So I, I, I'm sure you hear that kind of story all the time. So like, how, how, do, how should people go about navigating that? Well, being friends with your ex is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Like there are some relationships where you like, you're toxic for each other, it doesn't work. There's so many variables, so it's not for everyone. And I will say that I'm not friends with all of my exes, I'm not, um, but, uh, with my ex-husband, 
we have this ability to communicate with each other that's gotten better since we've gotten divorced Interesting. and to be able to like debrief my entire marriage with the person I was married to is very unheard of and I understand that um but I think it's getting out of our own ways so like I used to be terrible at receiving feedback but as I was writing this book and I, as I'm getting to know myself and growing in personal development and becoming a coach, I like wanted to hear. So I would ask him with an open mind, ready to receive whatever he had to share. Like, I remember doing this. What could I have done better? Or, oh my gosh, I now see how I could have done this differently and just talk it out with him. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to do that has been really cool. But we also have to communicate clearly what is needed so right. I, we weren't friends right away at first it was really hard like when we got divorced i like there were moments where i hated him there were moments where i didn't want to talk to him and we didn't there were lots of times where we didn't talk for a while but you have to be able to clearly communicate that and ask for the space that you need and then you know if right now we're in a space of he needed some time and we're not talking for a month or so mm -hmm. fine great there's a lot going on in the world sure <laughs> like, right right 2020 hit <laughs> black man in america yeah. at this time mm -hmm. and coronavirus and now i'm living the life mm -hmm. that you dreamt of us having together that's a lot of to emotionally process interesting at one time so you're so you're saying that uh he wanted to like kind of take time away you know because like obviously he's going through a lot I'm, like i'm assuming he's he's black right yes like me yay uh yeah. so, <laughs> so so on top of everything that's going on in the world right now you he's seeing you be a successful person on your own uh without him and he may potentially feel some sort of way about that is that what am i gathering that correctly yes and it's not that like he's so excited for me and mm -hmm. celebrates me and is like this is amazing and I can understand how hard it is because I'm living the life he was dreaming for us and I didn't get it then. I didn't see it then. I didn't understand what it was like to work for myself. I had these weird concepts about money and he was trying to tell me like this is not how money works and I could not hear him at the time. I now know differently but it's just like um, it's like planting seeds. You know, one person will say it to you and you won't get it. Like, mm -hmm. you'll have to hear it six times and your mom has told you 1,200 <laughs> times. But this one person tells you and you're like, oh my gosh, right. that's amazing. <laughs> so that's what's happened with some of the things. Is like, he told me this stuff when we were married and I didn't get it. I didn't have the eyes to see or the ears to hear at the time. And now I do. And so it's really hard because it's like, oh, that sucks. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. And so it's just a lot to process. What would you say to to women out there who are divorced that may not have that kind of may not have somebody that is like really good at the communication side of things? Because it sounds like you you both are are really good at communicating with each other. You know, like it's it's like you're able to comfortably at this point say to each other, "This is how I feel," or you know, "This is what I think we should do," or I'm going to write a book about us. Is that okay? You know, that kind of stuff. Um, for the people that you talk to where that's not the case, uh, what, what, what do you normally say to them? I teach them about the drama triangle and boundaries. Mm. Interesting. The drama triangle and, and boundaries. Yes. Yes. <laughs> nice. Okay. So, so, okay. So I, I'm going to get to the drama triangle in a second, cause that sounds fascinating, but, but, but boundaries, uh, yeah is setting boundaries between you and your and your ex is key so key mm -hmm. um if you, especially if you have children and you guys are really angry with one another mm -hmm. like i am a product of my parents are divorced and still cannot talk to each other and it's been over 20 years it's crazy um but like in those situations you have to be able to parent together mm -hmm. and so creating whatever those boundaries are. And so if at first it's the only contact we ever have is because we want to make sure our kids are okay. So we'll have a 10 minute conversation once a week to share logistical information and what will drop the kids off at this 
at a supermarket so we're not going to each other's houses mm -hmm. and we'll do you know whatever boundaries you need in order to feel um safe safety is still an illusion that's a whole other conversation but mm -hmm. in order to feel safe and okay and um like you are owning yourself and taking care of yourself but then also so that you have you have to hold those boundaries because they're not going to be effective unless you hold them right interesting so and 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 the second part of this was the the drama triangle yes. uh, what what is the drama triangle that sounds like a movie i would watch and i'm all about it <laughs> <laughs> so the drama triangle i learned this initially with the hendrix institute but i think there's a lot of people in the coaching world that know about it um but it's you have the hero the victim and the villain um, a lot of people understand what a victim and a villain is. Um, a lot of people don't understand the hero part. So when you jump into the drama triangle, if you are, women, you are so, we are so good at this. We are great at trying to, men are good too, but like, especially with kids. So you're jumping into the drama triangle and you're going to be like, okay, fine. I will fix the situation. I will do this for you. I will figure this out and I'll make it work because of blah, 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 blah. And you, you see the other person, when you see the other person as a victim, you see them as less than and not capable. So then eventually you come around and you're like, well, I did all of this for you. And then you resent the person because you tried to hero the situation when they might not have asked for your help in the first place. I see this. <laughs> that is fascinating. Fascinating. So, how, oh, man, I, oh man, I wish this podcast was like four hours long because I have so many questions. Oh man. So, if, okay. All right. Then uh, I don't even know where to go. Okay. So, AKA, people should get the book. <laughs> I don't people, talk about the drama triangle in the book. Okay. But I do one on one coaching. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do some plugs in a second, but uh, no, that's that's fantastic. Uh, so I guess if if there's something that you want people to take away from reading your book, what would it be? Do we have time for me to read a really short chapter? Absolutely, sure. Awesome. Um, because mostly it's like reframing, and yeah. there's some heavy stuff in here, and there's some silly stuff in here. Yeah, I'm going to read a lighthearted chapter sure. right now. Yeah, it's yeah. called Disney Villain. Okay. So it's uh, about 2016, and I'm talking to myself. I completely caved inside of myself. Really? I look like a Disney villain? What is that supposed to mean? I'm ugly? This lipstick looks terrible. Why did I buy this dark, dark lipstick anyway? I mean, I wanted to try something new. I wanted to see how it would be, but my husband thinks look, I look like a Disney villain. I guess I'm just gonna take it off. I know there's a pretty steep contrast with my pale winter skin and this dark red color, but now I'm evil and ugly because of it. I guess I'm done trying with makeup again. I don't need it anyway. It's a pain in the ass to deal with, but how could he say something so mean and inconsiderate? I don't get it, he's so rude. Fast forward to 2019. He and I are now having a conversation. Me. I know I completely overreacted to that time when you said I looked like a Disney villain with a dark lipstick on. If I would have stopped to ask a clarifying question, I probably could have found out more about what you meant by that instead of just assuming and drawing my own conclusions. I also know that it would have been pointless for you to even try to help me understand at the time because I wouldn't have had the ears to hear or be in the place to receive whatever it is you were trying to say. Morris, my ex-husband. Yeah, I know. You looked hot. You had a look that only a Disney villain could pull off. Fierce and amazing. Well, damn. Wow. I, okay, so this is, this, is, this is what I surmise right now. People need to get this book. <laughs> people need to get this book uh i don't hate my ex-husband because I, I i think that uh the, there's a lot of people because like my, my audience uh believe it or not is, is mostly female uh and i hear a lot of I, I hear a lot of stories from from uh divorced women that are at a point in their life where uh they're confused and they they want to find something to, you know, to, to, to hold on to, but they still want to be independent and strong and, and all that. And like, let's be real. I, I, I don't, I don't live in that world. 
right? I don't, I just don't. I, I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a, I'm a 32 year, I'm 32, I'm 33. Oh my goodness. I just refuse to accept the fact I'm getting older. Uh, <laughs> I am a 33 year old man who's never been married. I don't have children and I've never been divorced. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I can't, it's hard for me to put myself into the shoes of the, some of the people that, that follow me, but I do appreciate you reading that and and telling your story because i know for a fact that there are people that are going to be listening to this right now that will get something out of this so i guess with that being said for anybody that is either currently going through a divorce or considering divorce or were recently divorced if there's something that you could say to them right now what would you say You're grieving, and the only way to grieve is through. There is no way around it. It sucks, and it won't be this heavy forever. It will not be this heavy forever, and you're not alone. There are lots of women out there, and I have a Facebook group called Transforming Grief into Superpower, and I would love to have you join that community of people. That's fantastic. So uh, that's, that actually leads to my next to the, the next part here. If people want to find out more about you and want to, you know, get your book and to, you know, even consider, you know, uh, having you as 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 your as their coach, what where can people go? Uh, coachingwithjess.net is my website, um, and basically any social media platform. If you type in coaching with Jess, it's me on uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. You can find me under Jess DeBose um linkedin anywhere <laughs> nice and yeah so what i'm going to do uh, i'm going to put it underneath of us uh on, on on the video and then for everybody that's listening on on google podcasts or spotify or anything like that i'm going to put it in the description so you'll be able to uh click through and, and go follow her and go visit her website and and seriously consider you know if anything just at least buying her book uh, i don't hate my ex-husband which you can get on on a lot of different areas if you just google it it's i mean it's there uh and you'll be able to easily find it i'm so happy that we got to sit and t- chat uh, one one thing that people don't know is actually how you and I connected, which is which is really funny. And well, I, I, I want to tell the story real quick. So um, last night, yesterday. yesterday, it was yesterday. So we're filming this on a, on a Monday. So uh, and and but it's it's going live on a Tuesday. But on on Sunday evening, uh, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, I was uh, on TikTok Live on my TikTok Live, and I was uh, I was writing. I just I was just playing music because I, I write every every Saturday and Sunday. Like those are my writing days, and I usually just you know keep to myself and and just put my earphones in and just listen to music and do some writing. But yesterday, I just had decided on a whim just to go online and, and or go on TikTok live while I was writing. So like there was no plan for to do anything special because like I go live every Wednesday and I have this full fledged like show that I, that I put on for people every Wednesday night. But last night or, or on Sunday night, I was like, you know, I'm just going to go on if people want to, you know, watch me write or if they want to ask me questions, they can, you know, so I was just playing music and just TikTok live. And then you just happened to, to come on my TikTok live. <laughs> Yeah, you were like on my FYP page and yeah. I just clicked on it and I was like, your title was like just chilling and like writing. So I was yeah. like, well, what are you writing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, so yeah, you asked what I was writing and I, and I was explaining to, to you and to other people that I, like I'm working on my book, um, uh, which is I Hate My Wife. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm working on, on my book, uh, which is about Sherlock Holmes. Uh, and, uh, and so we could just kind of start chatting about that. And then I learned about you and I was like, oh, you need to come on my show. You have to come on my podcast. This needs to happen like right now. So you just happen to be free today. And less than 24 hours later, here we are, uh, sitting and chatting and, and, and I'm, I'm super excited. Now you live on the West coast, right? I do. I'm in Oregon. In Oregon. Okay. Are you, are you, are you close to Portland? Because I know there's a lot of, a lot of stuff happening out there right now. (laughs) Yeah. I'm about an hour, 20 minutes south of Portland. Oh my gosh. I can, I can only imagine what, what it's like out there. Cause I feel the effect all the way over here in New Jersey, but let alone to be like where, you know, a lot of this is Yeah. I actually went to the protest a few weeks ago. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How, what what was the, what was the vibe like there at the, at the protest? It was very peaceful. 
Yeah. So whatever the news is showing is not actually that's, what's happening. That's what stinks because what because I I often hear that especially like when uh, like in this area like when there were protests in Philly and New York and 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 in the areas where I live, ninety. 9.9 percent .9 of the time it was 100 percent peaceful it was fine and then you like just you could blame whoever you want it doesn't matter but like the things that the people that they show on tv and online are the are the this is the point one percent where is the right the rise and what doesn't help is that now people are dying at these at these things and it's just it's just unfortunate that like that is what's being portrayed on television and not the other 99.9% .9 of those protests. Yeah, and the other thing is about Portland, it's like a really small area. Yeah. So like you go in most of Portland and it's same as usual. Life as usual, people in the park having a picnic and you know, but it's this very small area that has been you know spray painted on and yeah. stuff That's you would have you would have never guessed because I, I like i don't know portland at all i've never been i would yeah. love to go uh uh because i I'm, I'm a i'm a big dame lillard fan so i would love to go see the trail trailblazers play but uh but you would think from from what's shown on tv and online you would think that the city is on fire and right. that like everybody's dying and that like all like there's just you walk outside your house and just like people are banging on your door and smashing your windows so you're saying that's not the case no it is not the case <laughs> it's a very small area and yes there are th things like when i went to the protest the most the whole time i was there it was fine but they we knew that around 11 30 every night is when shit hit the fan so we left before then yeah yeah uh, that's 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 unfortunate, but uh, yeah. but I'm sure you were happy to be out there to to. Yes, to it was the first time I've ever been to a protest, yeah. and I felt like it's super important. I want yeah. to go back and do it. Yeah, I would I would love to go. I, you know, my my biggest fear is the is the the pandemic. It's just like I just I don't know. Like, Everyone I, I had a mask go. on. Yeah, Every yeah. Every person had a mask on. Yeah, I I definitely want to go. I remember I went to my first protest I ever went to. It was after Donald Trump got elected, and he came to Philly. And I remember we we went out there because I was working in Center City, Philly at the time. That place was packed with people just like not happy that he was there, me included. And it was it was uh, fantastic. It was such a fun. It was, oh, my God. It was so fun. I was in South <laughs> Korea when that happened. So oh, wow. yeah. I was not even here. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, hopefully uh, November comes around and we... Uh, we, we, we take care of that situation. We'll see. <laughs> yes. Go out and vote, people. It doesn't matter. Listen, I don't. I, I tell people all the time, vote for who you want. Like, I'm not going to sit here and tell people to vote one way or the other. Like, people know my views, but I, I'm not going to sit here and try to tell people, like, hey, you need to vote for this person or you can't vote for this person. All I, all I say is just go out and vote. Yeah. What, however you feel, just please, please, please just go out and vote. Yeah. You know? Sure. Uh, but that's neither here nor there, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I really do appreciate you taking the time uh, out of your day to sit and chat with me and, and all of that. And, and I look forward to, to, to hopefully chatting with you again. Yes, please. This absolutely. Fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, honestly, thank you so much. Everybody, if you want more Jess, uh, you can go visit the links that I put down underneath if you're watching uh, online or if you're listening on Spotify, you can follow the links within the description and go uh, follow her and buy her book, which is called I Don't Hate My Ex-Husband fantastic stuff that she has in there make sure you go and buy it it is well worth it and if you want more vibe with kai you can go visit uh, me on facebook twitter and instagram at the vibe with kai you can also follow me on snapchat and on tiktok at kairos keenan and you can visit my website the vibe with kai.com where i'm always posting things that'll help you do good feel good be good and live a good life full of good vibes thank you again jess for joining me everybody else have a wonderful day god bless and good vibes <laughs>